Welcome to Solve It Like a Marketer. I'm Stephen Hobey. Today I'll be exploring Marketing Myopia by Theodore Levitt and how to avoid it. If you like this video, please subscribe and don't go away. Now, Theodore Levitt was a German-born American economist and professor at the Harvard Business School. He's also known for popularizing the term globalization. Now, he was born in 1925 in Germany, but he later moved to Dayton, Ohio. He was drafted into the U.S. Army before graduating and served in Europe during World War II. Now, after the war, he worked as a sports writer for the Dayton Journal Herald. He then earned his PhD in economics from the Ohio State University and later then taught at the University of North Dakota before moving to Harvard. Now, many of his writings addressed the undervalued role of marketing in defining what businesses should make and sell and the approach they should take in their marketing efforts. Now, he was also known, Mr. Levitt, as Ted and would gain widespread attention while being uh, serving at the Harvard faculty. And it, it was there that he published for the Harvard Business Review his article on marketing myopia, which criticized executives for too narrowly defining what their companies did. He posed the argument that at the time, the railroad industry had lost customers to the airlines, trucking and auto industries, in part because executives thought they were in the business of running trains instead of providing transportation. Therefore, he encouraged executives to switch from a production orientation to a consumer orientation. As Levitt used to put it, people don't want a quarter-inch drill. They want a quarter-inch whole. See the difference? So in his view, organizations invest too much time, energy, and money in what they currently do rather than focusing on consumer needs. Hence, the case of the railroad companies. They should have viewed themselves more as helping customers get from one place to another, thus expanding into other forms of transportation like cars or trucks. He would have asked executives to think about what business are they really in? What are they really doing for their customers? Now, this theory or mindset was really seen as revolutionary, revolutionary at the time. It sold more than a thousand copies. Uh, there were 35,000 reprints, um, and it's risen to about 850,000 over time. And what is pure genius about his theory is it really is still relevant today. So rather than being prescriptive in his approach, he wanted people to think carefully in some senses outside of the box and out of the confines of the stuffy boardroom. And what's fascinating is that many companies, even today, suffer from acute marketing myopia. But what are some of the causes of marketing myopia? Well, number one, a business only anticipates growth. So some companies may believe they are in a growth industry or that their product has no competitive substitutes in the marketplace. So this can lead to a false sense of security and is certainly a myopic perspective. So always consider all forms of competition that are out there. It's easy for companies to become complacent. So you need to be consistently conducting market research and doing environmental scans to stay competitive. Number two, a company may lack clear goals. So companies should have clear short-term and long-term goals. Basically, you can't exist in a vacuum. So you need both these long-term and short-term growth strategies and business goals. So always consider your consumers and their changing needs. So you may have a great product, but 
Is this what the consumer needs in the here and now? Number three, leaders want fast results or quick wins. So it's fine to have the low hanging fruit mindset, but you really can't rely on this. This doesn't make for a competitive edge or for company growth. And in an essence, you will remain static. Number four, excess need for positive marketing data. So typically executives are consistently pushing for results. So employees may feel pressure to produce data that shows their marketing concepts are being successful. Well, this isn't really very productive. It again only focuses on the here and now, where results may be adjusted to show success rates. So rather than focusing on longer term results, again, this can be seen as myopic. We always need to see the big picture. And sometimes that means taking a more critical look at the state of things. State of things, both good and bad. Number five, I chose overconfidence. So you always want to be able to pivot your business. You can never be overly confident, as I've mentioned. Customer trends can really turn on a dime. So take the pandemic, for instance. This radically changed the way that we do business and offer products and services. Again, this goes back to your competitive edge and really listening to the needs of your consumers. Number six may seem a bit obvious, but it's merely neglecting to identify a basic target demographic. So don't just throw paint to the wall and hope that it sticks. In terms of marketing, broad campaigns only really work if you have millions of dollars to spend. Even then, maybe not. But for most of us with limited budgets, we need to make more niche. We need to be more niche in our approach. So think about, for instance, creating buyer personas for different products and services. And this will really help to inform your creative direction for your marketing campaigns. Okay, so here's some further tips on how to avoid marketing myopia. So the simplest way to avoid is by focusing on what the market really wants. So have a clear vision. How can your product or service make a difference now and in the future? So put the customer before the product. This one is key and really speaks to the heart of Levitt's theory. Rather than focusing on the features of your uh, product, focus on what problems they may solve for customers. And along these lines, put marketing first. So most companies create their service or product and then figure out how to market it. When in actual fact, it could be the other way around. So figure out what people want and need ahead of time, then offer a product or service that meets those needs. So marketing should also be malleable. So don't allow your marketing strategy to become stagnant. Marketing needs to consistently adapt to the marketplace. So be in constant research mode by conducting environmental reviews, for instance. And this also involves not only keeping tabs on changing needs of your consumers, but watching closely how your competitors are evolving. And finally, if you can, diversify. So as you meet these changing needs of customers, think of ways to expand or adapt your offerings. What works today may not work tomorrow. So always focus on what your company's point of differentiation is. What makes you truly unique and how what you offer is the very best option for consumers to engage with. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and please share, share, share so that other people can also enjoy my videos. You can also catch me on Instagram and Facebook for extra content and you never miss an episode, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. All those links are below. I'll see you every week with a new video. So please stay tuned and together let's solve it like a marketer.